So uh, basically, in terms of risk factors, mm -hmm. eh? so we even if we say it, it has no known cause, there are certain risk factors. Eh? Mm -hmm. So uh, one advanced maternal age or even advanced paternal age. Mm -hmm. So it means that either the mother is older, the father is older, the risk there is higher. Alcohol consumption also uh, increases the risk of you having an a blighted ovum because it can cause chromosomal abnormalities. Uh, other things, including the uterine malformation, like if the uterus is not very well formed and it maybe it has a septum or it's uh, you have the the wall of the uterus not very uh, having any malformation can result in a blighted ovum nutrition therapy by lucy this is a channel where we talk about food good nutrition and health thank you for your support for always watching my videos leaving a comment giving them a like i am so grateful but if you're here for the first time please make sure you hit on that subscribe button the red button for the new subscribers karibu sana feel welcome here we talk all matters nutrition and health to make sure that we live or we have a healthy lifestyle so our today's topic we are talking about blighted ovum still around pregnancy and taking us through is Dr. Elizabeth. She'll be taking us through the topic. We get to understand it deeper and also maybe diagnosis, how to diagnose it and also take us through the management. So Dr. Terry. Thank you very much. Sana, thank you for allowing us to do this with you. Kindly you. introduce yourself to the audience. All right. So my name is Dr. Elizabeth Kitao Maina. I am a medical doctor uh, currently working at Equity Affair here in Upper Hill. Maybe other titles, you know you have titles that <laughs> <Dr. Ari. laughs> All right, so um, I am currently a health system consultant and working as the CEO of Kenya Station of Private Hospitals. I think most of you probably know me, I've just left my role as a CEO of Kenya Medical Association. Yeah, Apple yes. Sun and <laughs> So, Dr. let's go direct to the topic. Maybe, am I even pronouncing it better? Is it you blighted are, ovum? Yes, it's a blighted ovum. So, what is a blighted ovum? So, a blighted ovum is a condition where the gestational sac or the sac which is supposed to carry the baby basically develops without the baby inside or without the embryo. So, usually it occurs either you do not form an embryo. So, when, when a fertilized uh, egg from the woman uh, is uh, meets the sperm now that's what we call a fertilized egg mm -hmm. uh, once you have that it's supposed now to start dividing and now form the embryo which now becomes the fetus of the baby uh, but sometimes you can have the fertilized ovum um, either not growing by uh, not growing so an embryo does not develop or an embryo develops but it fails now moving forward now to, to make a baby so what you end up with is an empty gestational sac so the sac that was supposed to carry the baby yes it implants in the uterus but it does not have any baby inside so doctor you want to tell me that you have the amniotic sac Yes. So at that point, it's, it's still called a gestational sac because mm -hmm. we are still at a very early period of development. Mm -hmm. So you see the amniotic sac is when now it's uh, later stages when you already have a fetus inside. Mm -hmm. So we still call it a gestational sac. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what really causes the ablated ovum? So um, generally, there's uh, most cases of uh, what you call idiopathic or unknown cause. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, but it is suspected that it could be as a cause of chromosomal abnormalities in the baby. So, the embryo itself had various chromosomal abnormalities, and that is why it did not form into, it did not divide as it was supposed to divide now into a baby. Oh, and also, you know, we, we read, I read some, maybe it could be. In Poor quality eggs, poor quality sperm. Yes, so uh, basically in terms of risk factors, mm -hmm. eh? so we even if we say it, it has no known cause, there are certain risk factors. Eh? Mm -hmm. So uh, one advanced maternal age or even advanced paternal age, mm -hmm. so it means that either the mother is older, the father is older, the risk there is higher. Alcohol consumption also uh, increases the risk of you having an a blighted ovum because it can cause chromosomal abnormalities. Mm -hmm. uh, other things, including the uterine malformation, like if the uterus is not very well formed and it maybe it has a septum or it's uh, you have the the wall of the uterus not very uh, having any malformation can result in a blighted ovum. Wow. Yes. 
and with a blighted ovum, do you get the same symptoms or maybe of pregnancy or what are some of the So symptoms? what usually happens uh, with a blighted ovum, so basically you start having the symptoms of pregnancy because for sure there has been a fertilized egg and it is implanting. So patients will come with nausea, they will of course come with a missed period mm -hmm. and all the other symptoms of uh, pregnancy fatigue, uh, they, are, they might be vomiting. So what is characteristic about a blighted ovum is that even some women now start spotting afterwards when now the symptoms are reducing before even they realize they are pregnant. So sometimes you can you can have some symptoms of pregnancy, then they disappear. But when you go and t they start getting tested, you find that the pregnancy test is positive. But when now they do an ultrasound, they find there is nothing. So in the beginning, yes, they'll have pregnancy symptoms. Then as it advances, usually because of course the baby is not growing, there is nothing that is producing the various um, the various hormones to support the pregnancy. Usually the pregnancy fails. So blighted ovums usually last about 7 to 12 weeks or about 13 weeks. By the 12th, 13th week, you, you're already starting to spot and, they, and they, you get a miscarriage or an abortion. So in the initial stages of a blighted ovum, the HCG levels are, are yes. there, they are detectable. Yes. Then as it goes, they... The they... pregnancy now fails mm -hmm. because, of course, you need now the, you know, uh, when you form the, when now a pregnancy occurs, eh? mm -hmm. so the uterus and the ovaries support the initial part of the, of the pregnancy in terms of hormones and the female body. But as the pregnancy starts becoming larger, we, we depend on the placenta the placental hormones to actually support the, the, the pregnancy. So you see in a blighted ovum, if you're not having um, a fata, if you're not having a growing embryo, usually now the, the hormonal profile that is needed to support the pregnancy fails. So by around week 12, week 13, you start spotting and now you get a miscarriage. So uh, a lady can only carry that pregnancy for around 13? Yes. Only for maybe 13 weeks? Yes, yes. Most of them are lost. Does it terminate itself or there are treatment options? So yes, there are treatment options. So uh, usually first, even before the treatment options is diagnosis, how do we get to know? Mm -hmm. So, and that is why it is important for any person who is actually has planned a pregnancy or knows that they are pregnant, mm -hmm. you need to go to your obstetrician mm -hmm. and gynecologist. So what ideally they do is one, they'll do the pregnancy test. And once the pregnancy test is positive, you need to do an early ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So the early ultrasound is able to tell us whether there's a baby growing and there's no baby growing so that if you're having a blighted ovum, there are options. So uh, it could either be given, there's some medication which is given mm -hmm. so that to sort of um, induce the abortion mm -hmm. or the miscarriage. And then secondly, you can go to theater, what you call the manual uh, evacuation. So mm -hmm. those two we, things. We call in layman's language, kuoshwa. Yeah, kuoshwa. Okay. Yeah, so it's like losing a pregnancy anyway. So we just complete the process. Or there are people who can, who decide to wait it out. Mm -hmm. So you wait it out and eventually most of the time it will just come out. And are there maybe psychological preparation? Because remember, as a lady, yeah, I, do, I don't understand the blight shed of them. Only the medics will understand what is going on. Yes. To a lady, you are losing a baby. Yes. And yes. Are there maybe psychological preparation? So how we how we treat patients who've gone through a blighted ovum mm -hmm. is similar to any patient who's lost a baby mm -hmm. or a patient who's lost a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So usually there's some bit of counseling that is done in terms of now you understanding the condition and why you need to have the the evacuation being done amakuoshwa. Mm -hmm. So you need to first understand that. So your gynae will uh, will do some counseling on you in terms of what it is and what the procedure that needs to be done and even now counseling in terms of should you want a future baby what to do uh should you need now further psychological help mm -hmm. uh usually the doctor now will send you to a clinical psychologist basically to deal with the grief because mm -hmm. losing a baby whether has been born already or not actually induces some sort of grief so usually you can go through grief therapy okay yeah okay help you people you are learning i thought i hope you took your pen and a notebook like we talked about the ultrasound, it is important to do your ultrasound in early pregnancy just to confirm the viability of the fetus, yes. whether it's alive, whether something is happening or just just, are they called pseudo pregnancies? Yes, yes. So, not, not necessarily pseudo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, sometimes, yes, you can have pregnancy symptoms, but you don't have uh, pregnancy going on. Uh -huh. uh, Pseudosiasis is called. Uh -huh. And sometimes now you see certain, certain abnormalities uh -huh. with pregnancies. So, that's why it's important. So, usually, and I know this uh, per se talk is not for pregnancy in general, uh -huh. but usually the first few weeks of development of a pregnancy is very, very important. Uh 
you might in fact if you were to be asked you might have uh, missing the last part of the pregnancy ultrasounds mm -hmm. that one we really don't uh, insist on but the first time uh, the first pregnancies because one we want to confirm the viability or if you're having any uh, challenges such as this blighted ovum mm -hmm. and then within 20 weeks also i want to check the genetic uh, composition of the baby mm -hmm. secondly also the ultrasound helps also to check whether the baby is developing well mm -hmm. there's an abnormality scan which is done at 20 weeks and that one is to check is the brain go growing okay if, are the hands growing okay mm -hmm. is the body growing okay so that even as a mother you can prepare or even have options of if the baby let's say if you develop because sometimes even some babies develop without a brain so if you notice at that point at 20 weeks there is no brain so this child cannot even survive outside the uterus so you can make a decision at that point to to go through uh, some sort of counseling and then terminate the pregnancy as opposed to carrying to nine months yeah, then you deliver a child who's uh, who is not viable mm -hmm. yes okay well that uh, sort of uh, yeah getting enlightened <laughs> yeah okay and there are there maybe future complications with not at all not at all so a uh, majority of the women who get a blighted ovum go ahead actually to actually have a, a baby mm -hmm. and, a, and an okay baby so the future pregnancies are not affected by the fact that you had this blighted ovum however if it recurs eh, it is important that uh, both the parents need to go through some genetic uh, testing mm -hmm. so that you see whether there are any chromosomal abnormalities that are there between both parents so that they can make an informed choice mm -hmm. and also usually even after after diagnosis and treatment of a blighted ovum part of it of the blighted um of the treatment for the blighted ovum is also to prepare for the next pregnancy and how we prepare first is also now you'll do a, a post the pregnancy you need to do an ultrasound to check uh, a transvaginal ultrasound to basically check for the uterus and how it looks inside mm -hmm. the inner walls of the of the uterus whether there's any malformation mm -hmm. uh, we can do genetic testing uh, for the same and also in terms of preparing for the next pregnancy sometimes we ask women to wait maybe three cycles before mm -hmm. now they try again basically it's just to get your body in a in a positive um, environment for you to actually now conceive again mm -hmm. during this period of course we are checking for your diet and especially for women folic acid is very very important yeah. before conception even yeah. so there's something called preconception preparedness eh? yeah. you don't start taking your supplements after because some of these challenges especially when it comes to abo early abortions and miscarriages mm -hmm. can be prevented if you had if you had some preconception uh, vitamins mm -hmm. multivitamins that you were taking yeah. So you are advocating for preconceptual care. Yes, yes. What it's very, family? very. It is. It is extremely important eh? mm -hmm. because uh, you notice there are a lot of, especially first time moms. Eh? So you, you maybe you're, you're newly married. You're very happy. You get pregnant. Then after ten weeks, you lose the baby because you were not. Your body was probably not ready for the pregnancy because first of all, you didn't know you're supposed to go as soon as you get the positive test. You're supposed to visit your gynae for anything. So it is important that even preconception. So when you say now I think I need to have a baby, just go get assessed. Let somebody look at you, uh, do an ultrasound, check your uterus, check for any infections if you have any so that they can sort it out. If you have any uh, anemia, like your blood level is low, can be checked, then usually we offer multivitamins for most women so that in case your folic acid is reduced in the body, uh, we can actually augment it. Okay, well, yeah. And maybe your advice to, to mothers, mostly the mothers, still most women we go we start our antenatal clinic maybe in the second trimester please yeah. your advice to them my advice is once you get that positive in fact not before uh, let me draw back once you want to have a baby mm -hmm. it's a uh, now you're planning mm -hmm. please visit your gynae so that you can actually plan very well knowing so that you're able to note any health condition you might have beforehand and also just to prepare you once you have that positive test it is important now you start working the journey with the obstetrician mm -hmm. so that tests certain tests can be done uh, and investigation including an ultrasound and early ultrasound to be done and in case any uh, supplementation is needed in terms of multivitamins is given at that point you notice most obstetrician will give you multivitamins for the first trimester mandatorily then after that they can actually ask you to maybe let it go so but for the first trimester very critical in the development of a child you actually need optimum condition so make sure you visit your obstetrician as early as possible wow 
Yeah. And also, Doctor, you talked of the, the how to prepare for the next pregnancy after an ablated ovum. Is, is it the same way you prepare after an ectopy? I know these are different conditions. Is it the same way you prepare? So it's it's almost uh, similar the same way because psychologically you need to be there, wait for at least three cycles, mm -hmm. have your prenatal multivitamins mm -hmm. being given early, and of course now check for any uh, malformations within the uterus uh, mm -hmm. before now the conception. And if it's it if it has become recurrent, of course you need to go through genetic testing you and your partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doctor, let's talk about age as a risk factor for developing a blighted ovum. Um, so yes, advanced, especially advanced maternal age, uh, mm -hmm. usually uh, can contribute to the risk of getting a blighted ovum because uh, one, the quality of the egg that is that are there, usually the quality lowers as 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 the age progresses. Eh? Mm -hmm. So and usually uh, here we are talking about women above thirty five. Eh? Usually mm -hmm. those are the ones we start terming as advanced maternal age. Eh? So I know most of us. <laughs> I know most of us are almost there, and that's mm -hmm. the time we are starting, especially with career and yeah, all. Career. Yeah. That is the time uh, we are actually starting to consider babies. Does not mean anyone above that age will still get a blighted ovum. I'm just saying that the risk is increased as you grow older. Does not does not necessarily mean only older older women actually get a blighted ovum, but it is an increased risk factor because chromosomal abnormalities in general in 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 the children or in the fetus are more common with advanced maternal age or even advanced paternal age because even the sperm's quality also uh, deteriorate over time again um, also in terms of um, certain to repeat in terms of genetic abnormalities mm -hmm. you might have a genetic uh, disorder that you don't know about mm -hmm. and also some autoimmune diseases that you don't know about that are affecting the the quality of the egg that you're producing so it is important if you've had either recurrent blighted ovum mm -hmm. to actually consider having genetic testing or even testing for an autoimmune disorder so that you ensure that uh, those are not the reasons why you're getting the blighted ovum and talking of genetics is this something maybe you can have maybe in your family history it's possible mm -hmm. so genetic disorders of course mm -hmm. occur occur in families does not mean everyone must must be affected by the disorder it just means that that particular gene or that particular abnormality occurs in such a family uh, so it is possible that another member of the family might also uh, have certain, certain challenges yeah. Well, what about when it comes to prevention? Is it a condition that you can prevent it? So you cannot prevent a blighted ovum. Mm -hmm. You cannot prevent it. So, of course, uh, the thing is, uh, in terms of, as you said, preconception care is very mm -hmm. good in terms of just getting the uterus or uh, the reproductive system optimum for a pregnancy, but it is not something preventable. Okay. Well, I hope you people you've learned, personally, I've learned that you can do your preconception care and also starting your antenatal clinic as early as possible as soon as you see that the two the two two lines or as soon as you you start maybe noticing the pregnancy signs so i hope you've learned something let me get to know the comment section what you've captured what you've learned and also give this video a like subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that anytime you upload an informative video like this one you get to be among the first people to get notified subscribe and bye bye for now